to help you convert your Google Sheet into a mobile or web app for business. So to get started, let's pop over to our example Google Sheet spreadsheet for inventory. As you can see, we have a number of column headers, including name, category, image, available, time checked, unit price, inventory value, order quantity, and barcode. It's important that these column headers are in the top row. But before we get started building an inventory management app, I just want to show you real quick that you could easily use the same principles to build a properties app, an employees HR app, a driver logistic app, or an orders app using the exact same Google Sheet to app system. So from our Google Sheet, there's two ways to get started. We could use the AppSheet add-on, or we could jump over to appsheet.com and go ahead and start for free. And so from here, we'll start with a new mobile app, start from our own data, and we'll go to inventory management app. And from here, we'll find our data. We'll take our example spreadsheet. And here you can see how AppSheet has taken our spreadsheet data and ported that into a functional mobile format. We can see this on our emulator, and we can also see this through my personal phone. And so we can do that just by going into our email. And here we'll find AppSheet has sent us an install email. We'll go ahead and install our inventory management app. We'll open it in Safari on iOS. You could also do so through Chrome on Android. We'll go ahead and install. And here you can see our fully functional mobile app. And we'll go ahead and create a shortcut. And now we'll add this to our home screen. And we'll call this our inventory management app. So from within our app, you can see that we have two preset views here. We have one that I've already created called new SKU, new stock keeping unit. And we could enter in a new item if we wanted to with a name, category, image, how many are available, unit price, all of that information. We could enter in and save it. And we also have our standard inventory view which allows us to see all of our grocery inventory. We could click in for details and all of that. And so from here, let's jump over to our editor and we'll see how an app like this is actually built. You can see that AppSheet has pulled in our inventory data and we'll go ahead and make sure that ads and deletes are enabled. This allows us to add and delete new rows from our app. Now we'll jump over to columns and you can see that AppSheet has taken the columns in our data and interpreted what type of data that is. Most of the time, AppSheet gets this spot on, but you can double check and see if there's anything you'd like to change or if you'd like to use any number of other data types. If you jump one tab over, you can see that we also have slices. And slices allow you to create a subset of your data. For instance, if we wanted to specify a slice for out of stock inventory, we could do that by creating a row filter condition that says that kind of very thing, but that's more AppSheet 2.0, so we'll skip that for now. And here in the UX, you can see that we have our standard inventory view which is right here. And this is a deck view right now, but we could change that if we wanted to into a table or gallery, any number of things. Basically, AppSheet is just taking the Google Sheet data and interpreting that into visual form. We could also change our positioning. If we wanted this on the leftmost side, we could flip it around and you'd see that inventory is now on the left, but let's go ahead and keep it in center or what is essentially right right now. We'd also sort our data. If we wanted to sort it by alphabetical order, we could do so, name ascending. If we wanted to group it by category, we could likewise do so. And now you can see that we have a grocery section, a personal hygiene section, and a pharmacy section. One thing to note is that we can also preview other form factors. And from our editor, we could even see likewise what it would look like on our smartphone, as I've already showed you on my actual phone, or on a tablet. or on a full screen web app device, like a laptop. Heading back over to our editor, let's jump over to the brand tab. Here's where you can change your color theme, your logo, your launch image, create special formatting rules. For instance, if we wanted to have um, groceries and hygiene be a different color, we could easily do so through this app editing tool. Now let's jump over to our behavior section. Here we can add specific actions, workflows, reports. And let me just demonstrate a simple action for you. If we wanted to have an action that would allow us to add order quantity, basically whenever we get a new shipment, we could say add order quantity. And for the table inventory, 
do this. There are any number of things we can do, but in this case, we're gonna go ahead and set the value of some column in this row, and we'll set our available, which is our available quantity, to be available plus order quantity. And what we're essentially saying in this action is for our available, which is 100, and our order quantity is 50, whenever we hit this action, let's go ahead and add these two together, 150, and that becomes our new available total. Here you can see our app. You can see that we have 100 avocados. Let's add our order quantity to that. Now we have 150. We'll go ahead and manually sync that. AppSheet will also automatically sync every couple minutes. But you can see now that our available total for avocados is 150. Workflows allow us to send messages whenever key changes occur. In this case, let's go ahead and create a low inventory warning. And we could say whenever, for instance, our inventory, any change happens, and this is true, let's say our available becomes less than 25, we can go ahead and let's just say we will email our store manager at appsheet.com. Very similarly, in reports, we could create simple reports that say at whatever time interval for this table, we could add some conditional elements if we wanted, then go ahead and email, text, or notify our manager. From here, let's jump over to security. You can see that we've required user sign-in since this is a private app. You could also change it to off for a public app and you can also select your authentication provider. In this case, we are on Google Sheets, so we'll stick with Google. And so once we're ready to go, we can go ahead and head up to our deployment check, and if you just hit not deployed, it'll run a deployment check. And we'll go ahead and move our app to a deployed state. If we wanted to share our app with users, we can go ahead and do so. We could share with an entire domain, or we could share it by a specific email, testuser at appsheet.com. And just like that, we could send off an invite. So as you can see, we have only begun to scratch the surface of what is possible on a platform like AppSheet. There are countless features we haven't touched on, and there are also multiple data sources like Excel, SQL, Smartsheet, Salesforce, and more that you can also connect into the AppSheet platform. The end goal for our users is to help you build powerful, intelligent apps without code directly from wherever your data lives. You can visit appsheet.com to learn more, or you can explore some of our sample apps for ideas. So let us know what you think. We'd love to hear from you in our comments. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. 